Okay, welcome back folks. It's time for our next 223 video. And the bullet for today is the 70 grain Nosler RDF. Now, just a couple days ago, we shot the 140 grain 6.5 millimeter Nosler RDF in 6.5 Creedmoor. It wasn't, it wasn't bad, it shot pretty well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this 70 grainer is gonna shoot in 223. I actually have two boxes of these guys. One of them I bought back when I did the series on 22 Nosler expecting to shoot him in that gun and the other box was actually sent to me by a viewer they were in the same package where well like the uh the lancer magazine that we've been shooting in my recent 223 videos he sent that along sent along some brass he sent those 140 rdfs and he sent these 70 grain rdfs so thanks very much to jared for those donations to the cause and we're finally getting around to shooting this 70 grain bullet this is kind of a a break from the normal monotony we had gotten into with the 223 videos where we were just basically shooting the 55 grain full metal jacket bullets and we were shooting the 77 grain Sierra Match, Sierra Match King in the Mark 262 series. And I've kind of had some of these other extremely interesting bullets building up on me that I've been wanting to test. A lot of people have been asking for more Mark 262 videos. Those are absolutely coming very soon. We've still got more powders to test in that series. So we'll be back at it really soon. But the last couple videos and this video and then one or two more will help me relax a little bit. I need to get some of these bullets kind of off my plate. So that's where we stand. Another thing that kind of links to the Mark 262 series is I'm working through a big pile of Lake City brass that I prepped. I've had some bad luck lately with my Lake City brass. I ended up with a big batch that I don't know what they were fired in or where they came from, but I had bought them from one of those big Volk brass websites and they all had really sloppy primer pockets and they were gross. So a couple different viewers sent me some more Lake City brass. I prepped up like 250 of them and these guys are really good. Nice tight primer pockets. They're in really good shape. They resized easily. So I'm trying to get all of these guys fired. So we've got the brass for today is fully ready to rock. It is Lake City. It's been cleaned. It's been resized. It's been trimmed. The military crimps have been removed from the, from the uh, primer pockets. And I've actually already primed these guys with CCI 41 primers. I wanted to make sure the batch had good tight primer pockets. So I'd, I'd gone ahead and primed them. So we're ready for powder and bullets here. In this video, there's not gonna be a whole lot of brass prep or any at all. As I mentioned, yep, CCI 41 primers are what's in that brass. And the powders for today, the first is going to be Ramshot X Terminator. This is the exact same powder as Accurate 2230. If you go over to the Western Load Guide who owns Ramshot and Accurate and look at all of the load data, all of the loads are exactly the same for X Terminator and Accurate 2230. They're the same stuff, just different uh, branding. Now the sad part is that Nosler doesn't give us any load data for the RDF bullets. So we're left to make it up on our own a little bit. And the Western Load Guide is one of the sources I took into account. I also looked at the Nosler data for their 69 grain bullets. I looked at the Hornady manual for their 75, I think, and 68 grain bullets. Just kind of tried to get an idea of where we should be. And with X Terminator, I want to shoot up to 24.0 grains. We'll do three tenths of a grain increments, which puts us starting at 22.8. So that's powder number one. Powder number two is IMR 8208 XBR. This has always been a good shooting powder for us. I got a nice fresh pound, fresh lot of 8208 XBR. For this guy, Nosler didn't have any data for their 69 grain bullets. So I was looking in the Hornady manual. I was looking on the Hodgson website and taking our own experience with this powder into account. What I want to shoot up to is 23.5 grains. I've kind of gone back and forth on this one, trying to figure out a, a max charge. I think we'll be okay at 23.5. We'll see. We'll keep a good eye, close eye on our brass, look out for pressure signs and whatnot, but 22.3 up to 23.5 is going to be our range. Hopefully we don't blow our face off. So as I mentioned, the brass is ready to go. This is hopefully going to be a quick one. So I'm going to start weighing out powder and X Terminator is going to be first. So one thing I forgot to talk about was overall length. Just skipped right over it like it wasn't even a thing. We're going to go with 2.260. That's our full standard AR magazine length. And we'll just see what happens. Now, if you're not familiar with these powders, Ramshot X Terminator is a ball powder. 
and IMR 8208XBR is an extruded powder, but it's got a pretty darn short cut. So of course, Accurate 2230, Ramshot X Terminator runs great through your powder measures and all of that sort of junk, but IMR 8208XBR doesn't run too bad either, just because those granules are so short. So I'm done weighing out powder. It's time to seed some bullets, so let's get to that. Okay, so I've got my Redding seeding die in the press, so let's get our 2.260 inch overall length dialed in. We're not even touching yet. Yeah, I'm still not close, 2.35, and I think I'm just about to run out of adjustment. We might have to, yep, I'm out of adjustment. So we're gonna have to get creative with our seeding die here to get our seeding stem to go low enough. And now I can't get it loose. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to put a case in without a bullet, raise the ram, and screw down the die until I feel it touch. And what that is, is the, there it is right there. That is the crimp inside of this seating die. The seating die has got a uh, an integrated crimp, so that's where it touches, and I'm just going to back it out. Let's go like a quarter of a turn. That'll give us the most adjustment with our seating stem to get our overall length short enough. Yeah, that looks like that's gonna be plenty of additional adjustment. Let's see where that's at. Still pretty long. Okay, wow. I might run out of adjustment again here. All right, that's as far down as it'll go once again. I think these bullets are meant to be loaded at magazine length. I'm gonna feel like a big uh, big dum-dum if they weren't. 2.267 <laughs> is as short as I can get it. Okay, so I did back out the die like an eighth turn off of the crimp. So let's go ahead and see if we can get a little bit closer to the crimp. All right, that's where it's touching the crimp. Now, luckily, all of this brass has been trimmed to the exact same length. So I don't have to worry about, okay, setting it with this piece of brass, and then the next piece of brass is gonna be longer, and it's gonna be into the crimp. So, all right, that's where it's touching the crimp. I'm just gonna, like, basically barely back it out. Like a 64th of a turn. Because where we feel it hit the crimp, nothing's actually happening yet, right? It's just barely touching. All right, let's see if that gets us where we need to be. Okay, I think I finally got there. Let me go ahead and seat a couple of them here. So the points of these bullets, the meplat of these bullets, seem to be pretty darn consistent. So I'm hoping we're gonna get a consistent overall length reading. 2.262, 2.261, 2.260, 2 2.260, and 2.260. I'm gonna try and tweak it just a tiny little bit more. All right, so I may have gone a little bit too far here, but that's okay. A couple extra thousandths of clearance in our magazine is not gonna be a bad thing. All right, this was our longest guy before, and now it's at 2.259. It was reading 2.260 a second ago. Yeah, so 2.259, 2.259, 2.259, 2.259, 2.259, 2.259. And 2.259, sweet. Like I mentioned, these guys have unusually uniform me plats. The hollow point is tiny on these. So that's what it looks like. Like I said, I hope these guys are meant to be loaded at magazine length. I think they are. And it doesn't, it, you know, it, it looks okay. It looks like the bearing surface of the bullet is still coming up above the case mouth just a touch. So, you know, the O-drive isn't down below the case mouth. Beautiful. Now, both of these are reasonably fast burning powders. We've got a little excess case capacity with both of them. I went ahead and seeded a max charge of both powders and definitely still feeling some powder moving. So that's about it, folks. I just need to get through these guys and seed them and we are ready to hit the range. I'm not gonna crimp them in case you were wondering. We have no cantalure. These guys are seeded a mile deep. So we've got complete contact between the the, uh, the neck of our case and the bearing surface of the bullet. So I'm not gonna worry about any sort of crimp. So I'll see you guys out on the range. All 
Okay, folks, it's time to get started with our 70 grain Nozzer RDF. This is, of course, my 223 upper. It's got an 18 inch white oak armament barrel. Shooting with a Silencer Co. Omega suppressor and a Magneto Speed V3 chronograph. But today I've also got my Caldwell Ballistic Precision chronograph out there. If you watched the last video, the 6.5 Creedmoor video with the 140 grain RDF, I ran both chronographs in that video as well. I'm trying to collect some data to get a feel for how much my two chronographs agree with one another. So that's going to continue here in this video. We are shooting at 100 yards, and the dots down there are one inch in diameter. The first load for the RDF is 22.8 grains of Ramshot X Terminator. The gun is warm. I had this scope off to put it on my 224 Valkyrie for some testing. So I've got it back on this upper, and I took about 10 shots to get it re-zeroed and ready for this video. So the gun is warm. We're ready to get started. Okay, so that first group was not too bad. The two chronographs actually gave the exact same average velocity of 2693. That's a little bit different than we saw in the last video. I'm not gonna complicate the range time here with a bunch of talk about the two chronographs. So we'll save that discussion until later when we're back at the bench. So moving on, the brass looked great. So next up is 23.1 grains of exterminator. Okay, so our group opened up a little bit, but the velocities look good. The brass looks good. So we're moving on, 23.4 grains. Twenty three point seven grains. So we did get a couple minor ejector swipes on our brass that time, but it's not so bad that it's got me freaked out. I want to go ahead and shoot 24.0 grains, but we're definitely getting up there in pressure. Okay, so that's a little bit disappointing in the accuracy department. And our highest charge here, we definitely got some more ejector swipes. So I think we were right up near the limit on pressure with this guy. So, yeah, a little bit disappointed so far. Okay, moving on to 8208XBR. First up is 22.3 grains.
All right, there's a better group. Okay, velocities are nice and low. Brass looks great. Moving on, 22.6 grains. All right, nice. So there were a couple pieces of brass that time that looked like they might have had a little bit of an ejector swipe. But it's nothing bad, but I'm gonna keep my eye on the brass pretty close here going forward. Next up is 22.9 grains. So the brass looks pretty darn good on this last group. So the ones I saw in the group before must have been from an old firing. Those minor just, you know, round ejector marks and a little bit of a swipe must have been old stuff. I don't know, man. But the velocity levels are good. 2711 on that last one. We shouldn't be having any problems, I wouldn't think. So moving right along, 23.2 grains is next. Okay, last up, 23.5 grains. All right, much better performance from 8208XBR. Huge difference between these two powders. So let's pack up, head back to the bench, talk it all out. All right, let's have a somewhat confusing look at our brass today. Here's our max charge with Ramshot X Terminator. All right, so these are looking pretty good. Little bit of a little bit of a swipe there on this first guy on the left, but the other ones look fine. So I really don't think we truly hit, uh, you know, any serious pressure here today, but sprinkled all throughout. Let's see if I can find you some more here. There's like some ejector swipes that are just kind of randomly distributed through all the charges. Of course, I'm not spotting any right now. I guess here's one from the fourth row that had a bit of a swipe. So yeah, I, I don't think there was a problem, but there were just some randomly distributed pressure signs. And it was uh, a little bit worse over here with 8208 XBR. There were a couple pieces, I think it was the second charge we shot. This guy, this row right here. Yeah, I think there's one right there. That got a bit of a swipe. Maybe that top guy a little bit. Then up towards the top, you know, this is our highest charge few minor swipes, but none of it's bad. None of it's terrible. These are a couple from the max charge. That's good looking brass. I'm happy with that. So this might just be old markings on the brass that I'm freaking out about or something, but yeah, no, nothing major to show you. Okay, let's start out with the bad. These are the Ramshot X Terminator groups, and it was not pretty. I guess that first group kind of tried to put something together there 1.024 inches but it just got worse from there the guy in the middle was over two inches and my confidence in this bullet was just dropping 
very fast as this set of groups went on. So nothing, nothing good to see here. It's all bad. So let's just move on to 8208XBR, and it was like flipping a switch, man. I love tests like this, where there's clearly one powder that was great and one powder that was really not great. It kind of justifies all of this crazy stuff we go through. All of this testing of different combinations of bullets and powders and primers and brass and guns. You know, sometimes it feels like we're spinning our wheels. The differences are, are minor. <laughs> it can seem like a waste of time occasionally. But then something like this happens and it's all worth it, man, because this was really good stuff. 8208XBR, these are good groups. Our second group was the best there at a .58 one inch group. That, that's good shooting, man. And even our bad group, the fourth group here, 1.617 inches where we had, we had a flyer to the left and a flyer to the right. It was still trying to group. The other three were packed right in there. So this, this was a gigantic boost in my confidence in this bullet. It'll clearly shoot. The velocities were just about right. I think we, you know, we, we got a little, we went a little faster with, with X Terminator. We might be able to push 8208XBR a little bit faster because, you know, this 2750 feet per second range, that's about the velocity range we push up to with our 77 grain Sierra Match Kings over in the Mark 262 series. And if memory serves, 8208XBR, we were able to get just a little bit past 2700 feet per second with that bullet before we started seeing pressure. So, eh, might be able to squeeze a little bit more out of it here with a 70 grain bullet, but but not a, not a ton, right? We were in the right ballpark. So yeah, that's pretty much it. 8208XBR turned this whole video around, man. It was headed, it was headed for a crash landing, but 8208XBR saved the day. This is pretty good stuff. Okay, so the other test that was going on at the same time here was the chronograph test, where I was taking numbers with my Magneto Speed V3, and also with my Caldwell Ballistic Precision. And what I did was I took all 50 shots from both chronographs and put them on a chart here that I want to show you. Now this is a little bit weird. We did this exact same exercise in a 6.5 Creedmoor video just a couple days ago, and the Caldwell Ballistic Precision read, I think it was 19 feet per second faster on average across the board. Here in today's test, the average difference was less than one feet per second. These lines are laying right on top of one another. Now there are some differences and sometimes there's some uh, reasonable size differences. Some of them 15, 20 feet per second different for a reading, but on average they were extremely close. Now the Caldwell Ballistic Precision Chronograph is a very cheap chronograph. So I was never sure how its consistency would compare to the Magneto Speed, which is a little bit pricier unit. But so far, the last test we did and this test, this, this is totally good enough. So I'm pretty happy with the result of that test. So I think that pretty much covers it, folks. We've still got 150 of these bullets left. So there's going to be additional videos down the line. If you have a particular powder you'd like to see with this bullet, let me know in the comments. I'll try and add it to the list. It seems like a good shooting bullet. So I think that's it, folks. My new dies for 224 Valkyrie came in today. So that'll be the next video. There's not going to be a big wait like there was for the last video. So I should have it cranked out here in a day or two. So I'll see you guys then.